Well, hello again. We're on to our second brief lecture in chapter 11, and that deals with chapter 11 deals with organizational structures and designs. In the first brief lecture, we looked more so at organizational structures. In this one, we're going to look more at organizational designing. Well, if you recall, when I was talking in organize uh, in brief lecture one, I mentioned that organizing, of course, is heavily influenced by planning. And plans, therefore, determine to some extent what our organizational structures uh, should look like. So how do we specifically relate that to our discussion here? How do we build that premise into what we're concerned about in terms of the types of organizational structures that we can create? Well, we use this term organizational design. We use organizational design to illustrate to us the need to connect specifically the type of organizational structure we decide upon or we utilize to the strategy or the plan that we would have created or we would have uh, formulated in our planning stage. So organizational design explicitly ties the concept of strategy with the concept of structure. There is this famous line in business that structure follows strategy. Which it was made by this guy called Chandler. And this is essentially the basis for organizational designs. So we design our structure. Listen to the term design. We uh, create, we, uh, we build our structure after we have determined what our plan is going to be, what we want to achieve and how we want to achieve it, because then that will tell us what type of vehicle, what type of structure we require in order to fulfill the plan. Just think about uh, you know, when, when people are designing a, the first airplane, if you will, you always see that there is a blueprint. There is some kind of drawing. Leonardo da Vinci, there were all these drawings that he created before he actually went about designing or creating the thing that he was drawing. Uh, when you're building a house, you have these blueprints, and all of those are just simply your plans that will then occur or, or, or often occur or should occur before you actually begin the construction phase of the house. So that's what organizational design says, the process of creating structures that accomplish mission and objective. Simply put, it is matching and devising, creating a structure, an organizational structure that best fits and matches your plan, your strategy. And it says it's a problem-solving activity that should be approached from a contingency perspective. Well, what do we mean by that? Well, what we essentially are saying is this. It depends. Your structure depends on your plan. Whatever your plan is, it then influences or determines your structure, which is why we have so many different types of houses out there. We have different types of houses because the people had different needs different requirements, different tastes, and those needs, requirements, and tastes were matched on, or were matched by the design of the house that they hopefully got at the end of the construction phase. So many different types of strategies will create many different types of structures. So it's a contingency perspective. It depends. Some structures work better for some strategies. Others work better for other types of strategies, other types of environments. So it really depends on what you require. That's the best type of structure for you. One of the early presentations of organizational design, organization structure, was this concept of bureaucracy. And we've heard this term often, but you, would, you, you might not know, you might not realize that when bureaucracy came out as a concept, it was actually seen as a good thing. It was seen as something much more beneficial, much more effective than the other ways of doing business at that time. And it was, it was promoted by this guy called Max Weber. And he said, your bureaucracy is a form of organization that's based on logic, order, and the legitimate use of formal authority. He was trying to get away from the disorder 
the inefficiency, the nepotism that was, that was occurring in many types of organizational structures that he was witnessing. And he said, bureaucracy is a way around that. It gets a clear-cut division of labor, which is the function of promotion of efficiency. You've got a strict hierarchy of authority, so people know who they're reporting to. There are specific rules in place, formal rules and procedures, so it's not just some sort of subjectivity where the guy, I don't like you, so I don't promote you. No, there's formal rules in the organization. Your promotion is not based upon who you know, or who likes you, but it's based upon your competency. That's great. The great benefit of bureaucracies is that it was supposed to promote efficiency. And it can often promote efficiency, but in the right environment. The question is, when is a bureaucratic form a good choice for an organization? Is it ever a good choice for an organization? And when is it not a good choice? What should then be an alternative to bureaucracy? So I will ask you the question of, when is a bureaucratic form of organizational structure a good choice? Is it ever? Well, the answer is yes. It, it can be. It can be good when the environment is suited for that type of structure, that type of structure. The environment determines the most appropriate design. The environment determines it because the environment influences our strategy or plan. Remember, we look at our internal and our external, and it then decides for us what is the best design? If we are operating a strategy in a very stable environment that promotes or requires efficiency, then guess what? Bureaucracies work for us. There are many examples, not that many today, but there, there are examples that still exist today where bureaucracies are actually beneficial. Think about the military. The military. The military operates in a relatively stable environment. Yes, there's wars and hostility, but for the most part, the military is operating in a very stable environment. It needs rules, it needs policies, and it's much more about being efficient than it is about being transitional or being highly adaptive. The military is about, that's why when you see people, they go to boot camp, they learn the rules, they learn the rigor, they go because the military is trying to be efficient. And in that type of environment, in a very stable environment, you want to use what's called a mechanistic design. And as you'll see very shortly, a mechanistic design is much like a bureaucracy very rigid to some extent. There's rules, there's a clear, line of a clear line of hierarchy, there is much more centralization, meaning the people at the top make the rules and it kind of flows down. It works well in stable environments because in a stable environment, you're really just trying to keep the status quo. You're trying to keep things chugging along as best as you can because you have the system, it works, all you've got to do is make sure it continues to work that way. It's kind of think of it like a train. My, my son, I have toy trains for him. And when you're on the track and the track's all smooth and it's going you know, along a straight line, all you really have to do there is to make sure the thing stays on the track. There's nothing that you need to do beyond that, okay? You just follow the rules, follow the track, and everything will be okay. But what will happen if there is now an obstacle on the track. Well, you just can't keep going the same way that you've been going, because if you do, you will run right into the obstacle. And so when the environment is not very stable, when it's not very simple, when it's not you know, all about just being efficient and, and inward looking, when there is much changes in the environment, you need something that is not so rigid. You need something that is much more flexible and that's where you then employ your organic designs. And they work best in a rapidly changing and uncertain environment. Again, mechanistic, a great, when it's stable, when you people can follow rules, when you know what's going to happen and you have a good rule book out there that you can follow, people know exactly what they need to do, that's great. But when things change, you need to have a much more adaptive organic design. I can actually give you an example of, 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 of a problem that can occur with a mechanistic design. This is actually something that, that happened uh, to me when I, uh, when I first came to you, when I, was, when I started working in the United States, I had to apply, apply for a specific type of visa. 
and then I had to apply for my green card. And when applying for my green card, I had to demonstrate to uh, the authorities, to, 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 to the immigration services, that my job, that I had, I had acquired my job uh, in a legal manner, not to, you know obviously like I'm going to the interview, but it was it, it, my job. It was required that it it had been advertised, right, to people such that I was just one. So it wasn't just I was the only person who heard about the job. So that would have been kind of unfair. That that everybody else had an opportunity to apply for. It. Everybody that was qualified could could apply for the job. Well, the 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 law as it stated as it was stated was written such that the 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 advertisement for my job had to be published in an actual newspaper. Well, I'm sure you all realize that the majority of, of places now no longer do ads in newspapers. The way that you know uh, messages and, and communication is is is, uh, is transferred is mostly through electronic communication now, and so that's kind of how my job was was advertised. It was advertised uh, online and via email, and so here was this law that required the job to be posted and published in an actual newspaper, but the environment changed such that people no longer use newspapers. So what was happening is there is that the, the law, the system, the mechanistic system, had not adapted to the environmental demands. And so there was a lot of inefficiency, a lot of problems that were occurring because of this mismatch between what the, the design, what the mechanistic design was created for and what the environment required of it now. And that's really one of the major problems with the mechanistic design, why we don't see a lot of mechanistic designs anymore, because this concept or the reality of a very stable environment is very, very uh, uh, infrequent in today's society. Most industries in today's society have some level of uncertainty. Remember we talked about uncertainty being complexity and the rate of change. Well, most organizational environments have some level of complexity and some high level of rate of change. And so most organizations have to gravitate from this bureaucracy, bureaucratic or mechanistic design into this organic design. It's a me, adaptive type organization that is dependent more so on things like teamwork and power empowerment participation rather than the strict rules, regulations, command of control as you see in the mechanistic design. And so here's just a brief uh, layout of the, of the two, the differences. The mechanistic design, predictable goals, so when you know exactly what you want to accomplish and it's something that, can, that happens frequently, mechanistic designs work often. Centralized authority when you, there is a need to have per people on the top make the rules and those below follow. Like in the military, you have mechanistic designs. There are many rules and procedures, many things that you have to follow, and, that, and that's, that's good in a military type scenario because you don't want people to necessarily have to rely on their own subjectivity when they're in certain air when there's cer certain situations that are life and death you want them to know the rules you want them to understand the procedures because that's really the only way that you can have some level of control in that type of environment narrow spans of control meaning that bosses employees don't have many subordinates you just have few subordinates so the, the organization is more tall then it is flat, specialized tasks, much division of labor. As we said, it's almost very, very similar to a functional type structure. A few teams and task force, and there's a formal and impersonal means of coordination. You do it more so through the formal networks. Organize the organi organic designs to the other extreme, if you will, adaptable goals, very decentralized. People below make uh, uh, the strategy and also employ their own decisions. There are few rules and procedures, and the reason for that is because rules and procedures aren't necessarily going to be very effective if the environment is often changed. You're going to have to have new rules and procedures all the time. So it's, it's almost better to have few rules and have people guided by principles more so. Wide spans of control, so whereas in the mechanistic it was tall, organic, or more flat. Shared tasks, in many teams, much, much interaction and networks, and a lot of informality and coordination. Much more social network than there is in mechanistic design. But it is very easy to confuse this uh, argument or these, these points into the suggestion that organic designs are better than mechanistic designs. It's very important that you remember 
that strategy influences structure. And therefore, if your strategy is one that requires a bureaucracy, i.e. the U.S. military, then a mechanistic design works best for you. If your strategy is one that promotes more innovation, i.e. Apple, then an organic design works best for you. It all depends on your strategy, which is again influenced by your environment. And this is just a, simply a look at these, these points on, on a chart here. And, but what's nice about this is that you realize that there's really no organization here that's just truly organic to the extreme and any that's mechanistic. What you find is that many organizations lie somewhere on this continuum. So they might be more mechanistic than organic, or they might be more organic than mechanistic. But this is a continuum. So you tend to have people, tend to, I'm sorry, firms are gravitating more towards this or to this, but not necessarily lying in any one of these extremes. Okay. The last thing we want to look at, though, is the contemporary organizing trends. And while I said to you, yes, it does not say or organic, or we should not uh, determine that organic is always better than mechanistic. The reality is based upon our current contemporary uh, situation in most organizational industries, the fact is there are few industries that are very stable, that require that level of efficiency, that require that level of rigidity that mechanistic designs bring. And so what you're seeing more so is a lot more, a lot greater popularity being uh, 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 driven or being related to the organic type designs. They are much more popular in today's business environment than our mechanistic designs. And that's simply because our environment or the mo most of the environments that businesses face in contemporary society is very, very volatile. And so they have to be adaptive in order to be successful. So what you see now in contemporary tra uh, tr uh, trends it's the fewer levels of management, shorter chains of command, less unity of command, meaning that there's this, this whole idea of this one boss to one person kind of idea. Wider spans of control, so it's becoming flatter, more people are reporting to one person. More delegation empowerment, that's kind of related to that because now you have more people reporting to one person. That person can't be the micro command and control type manager. They really, excuse me, need to delegate the authority to the individuals below them and they can do that now more so than it could before because the humans, the employees that are working there are much more knowledgeable, they are much more empowered, they have much more human capital and social capital and so they are therefore up to the task of essentially managing themselves. Decentralization and still having centralization so there is still a decision made at the, th the top but there is much more decision making at lower levels and the reduced use of staff using people much more so effectively and efficiently throughout the organization. This again is just a contemporary trend. Similarly, you will see houses now being built. My wife and I, we watch a lot of HGTV and every time you look at these, you know, a home and garden television, you, these people are designing their houses. They say, what do you want? I want an open concept. I want an open concept. I want an open concept. The reason why is in today's society, people are doing much more entertaining at home than in, 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 uh, outside of the, of the home. And so because of that, people are staying in, they have all of these great flat screen televisions, they have all the great things that they can get outside, they can do it at home now, people are entertaining at home. The environments change, and so what? The structure, the design of houses have changed to influence that type of arrangement. Before people used to have a lot more kids and so they would require a lot more rooms. Now people are having fewer kids, they want more open spaces. That is reflected again in the design. Same thing with business. Businesses are reflecting their environment and the changing of strategies moving away from efficiency to now more so innovation. That change, that transformation, that movement is going to be reflected in the type of structures that they employ. No longer do they employ the functional, mechanistic, simple, but because they're moving into much more adaptive, innovative, diverse markets, many customers, different products, you're going to see more organ uh, sorry, organic designs in contemporary society. Shorter chains of command and streamlining. So that's what I want to want you to understand. Design is all about matching your structure to the demands of your environment and to the dictates of your strategy. 
your design is therefore going to be influenced on how you want to accomplish your specific objectives. You match your design based upon your environment and your strategy. Mechanistic designs are much more rigid, much more bureaucratic, much more control and command, but it promotes efficiency. Organic designs are much more flexible, much more adaptive, less, much more informal. It promotes that flexibility. Okay? It depends. It's a contingency perspective. Contemporarily, we are seeing much more organic again because the environment requires it. But it does not mean that mechanistic and bureaucratic does not have a place or a part to play.